Are you tired of your watercolor paintings looking like a total mess? You want soft edges and they turn into a spider web of hard edges. You would like to add just a little bit of a stronger color and it ends up drying as a collection of bleached water blooms, dark at the edges with no paint in the middle. If that is the case, this video is for you. I'm confident these five watercolor painting techniques we are going to talk about today hold many of your answers. If you master them, they will change the way you paint in watercolor forever and help you immensely to increase your painting confidence. At the end, you can paint with me these three different watercolor studies of plums and practice all five watercolor painting techniques. Hi, my name is Lela and welcome to another Paint and Draw Together video. Thank you for joining me today in another video about how to paint in watercolor. In particular, how to apply watercolor paint on paper and how to master controlling its flow. We want to know why watercolor paint travels the way it does and how we, as watercolor artists, especially beginners, can learn how to control it and leverage this knowledge to our greatest advantage. Let's dive in. In the captivating world of watercolor painting, there are always two essential players. One, the distinguished watercolor paper, and the second, the versatile watercolor brush, or even a thirsty napkin that we occasionally use to delicately soak up excess paint. Together, these two players dance in harmony, waving beautiful artistry onto the canvas of possibilities in each of the watercolor paintings we create. Let's explore the unique roles each of these two players undertakes in the very, very captivating world of watercolor. So if we look at the watercolor, what is it? It is water and color. The amount of water we use determines everything we do in watercolor painting. Each of these two players can be in one of the four following stages of wetness. By wetness, I'm referring to the amount of moisture or water in each of them. I can easily say that the paper or brush can be swimming in water which I will call swimming wet. It could have a little less, which would be wet, and even less than that, which will be damp, and eventually, given enough drying time, they both become dry. So there are four different stages, swimming wet, wet, damp, and dry. Let's explain what each of them means. When we say swimming wet, what that means, if we are talking about the paper, is that we applied a flood of water on the surface of the paper and there is a pool of water on the surface which is yet to be absorbed. After enough time, it will, but when we apply it, due to the sizing on the surface, that water would sit on the surface initially for the first 10-20 seconds and then slowly sip into the pores of the paper, opening them up to accept and eventually trap particles of our watercolor paint. If we are talking about brush, swimming wet actually means dripping wet. We put the brush in the, in the can with water and we took it out without touching the walls and now we see the drops of water falling down from that brush. That is what we will call swimming wet. It's completely and fully saturated with water. Or if we use watercolor paint, with watercolor paint. The second stage, wet, is when the paper had some time to absorb some of the water from the surface and it is still fully saturated and we still can see generous amount of sheen on the surface of the paper, but we do not have those thick 
pools of water swimming on its surface. When you are talking about brush, that is when we dip the brush in the water, we take it out and we touch the sides of our water container so that this dripping droplets of water are captured and the amount of water left in the brush is sufficient but not falling if we just shake it a little bit. So in that case, we are, you can conclude, in much better control where that paint will go because it's all holding the brush and unless we touch the paper or touch some surface, that water will not be discharged. The third stage is dump. If we are talking about the paper, the paper is dump when the sheen is almost gone from the surface and we can barely see it or even if it dries a little bit more, even if sheen is gone, the cotton paper still has capacity to hold moisture for quite some time and that paper is still damp, which means depends how damp or dry it is, we can still add watercolor paint to it just because it doesn't hold a lot of moisture that paint would not go too far if we do not use a lot of paint in our watercolor brush and the last stage is dry in that case there is really no moisture the paper is dry or the brush is dry there isn't really any moisture which means if the paper is dry and we apply water to it then that water will just sit on the surface for some amount of time before it starts to get absorbed into the pores of the paper. Usually if the paper is wet, in order to reach completely bone dry stage, it requires at least two, three hours. And sometimes if that amount was large, even the best is to leave that payment that painting overnight. Depending on the amount of moisture on either side, paper or brush, the watercolor paint will always travel from the area with more water and moisture to the area which has less of it. This could be described as pull and push effect. If the amount of moisture is relatively equal, the paint will just mingle and mix flowing into each other, creating very interesting color trails. But before I explain and demonstrate each of the five watercolor painting techniques related to the amount of moisture in the brush and paper, let's look into three fun facts, which will help us along the way. Fun fact number one. Why does the water flow from the wet into dry area? In the water, as in any other liquid matter, there are relatively weak, cohesive, in simple terms, gluing forces that keep molecules of the water hugged together in the water droplet. When that water droplet falls on the dry surface, there are adhesive, pooling, gluing forces pulling that water molecules from the droplet towards the dry surface. And when these intermolecular cohesive forces in water droplet are weaker than pulling adhesive forces between that water droplet and surface, the water droplet gets spread on the surface and wets the surface. Yes, who would know that this is what we are actually doing the whole day long while painting in watercolor. The story does not end there, which brings us to the fun fact number two. What happens next is another phenomena called capillary effect. Capillary reaction, or commonly known as capillary effect or motion, is when liquid flows through narrow spaces without external forces such as gravity. Once the watercolor paint is on the surface of dry or damp paper, it moves and gets sucked in 
in the small pores of the watercolor paper, aided by adhesive forces present between the wet watercolor paint and the paper surface. Which brings me to the last fun fact, number three. Did you know mercury is the only metal that is in the liquid form at normal room temperatures and has insanely strong cohesive forces between its molecules. So it will not be absorbed by any surface at the room temperature. However, don't play with it. It's one of the most toxic substances known to mankind. If you're asking what all this has to do with watercolor painting, the answer is it has everything to do with watercolor painting. It is a foundation that helps us understand what we need to do in our watercolor paintings to obtain a desired effect. In simple terms, what do we need to do to make watercolor paint go where we want and make it behave the way we want? Simply to help us to create desired kind of edges or spread or mixing between the colors and at the end of the day, create better paintings. Based on this essential knowledge, there are at least five watercolor painting techniques worth mentioning derived from all possible combinations of wetness in the paper and in the brush. Let's explain and demonstrate each of them. As I mentioned earlier, the first player is brush and the second player is paper. If we compare a first one with the second, those five essential watercolor painting techniques will be wet on dry, wet on wet, damp on wet, damp on damp, and wet on damp. You would rightfully say there are more than five combinations, but without going into any precise mathematics here, those five would be probably the most used ones and easiest to understand and engage in every watercolor painting. So let's start with the first one, wet on dry. In this case, the brush is wet or swimming wet and the paper is dry. This produces a flat wash of clear water or watercolor paint. If we add another color with the wet brush, Colors will start to mix on the paper and create very interesting and unique color trails, which makes watercolor one of the most versatile and unique painting or drawing mediums out there. Oil paints can't do it. Acrylic, maybe, with the help of extenders and various pouring techniques. And color pencils or graphite drawings for sure cannot do it. This unique property makes watercolor painting one of the most versatile painting mediums out there. Some artists even claim that watercolor painting is capable of painting itself. We are just facilitating the process. The second watercolor painting technique is wet on wet. In this case, paint flows freely and mixes on the paper, which means we took a brush, we applied water on the paper, we gave it a little bit of time to get absorbed, and now we can take our watercolor brush, dip it in the water, pick some paint, dissolve it, and then touch that wet paper with the wet brush, which will soak in the paint and start dispersing it on the wet surface, creating very soft edges. The third painting technique is damp on wet. In this case, the brush is barely containing any amount of moisture and the paper is wet. So if we take that damp brush and we go over wet surface of the watercolor paper, what's going to happen? The brush will start soaking up that moisture because you remember water travels from the area which is more wet to the area which is more dry, in this case, damp brush. So in that case, 
if we, let's say, apply the paint on the watercolor paper and it's wet and we come in after we gave it a little bit of time to get absorbed in that paper with damp brush, it is going to, wherever we pass with that damp brush, leave white trails. They would not be pristine white, but they will certainly have much lighter value than the surrounding paint. This way we can create different values which are lighter in the path where we travel with our watercolor brush on the paper and leave the rest to stay as dark as we initially applied. The fourth painting technique is dump on dump. This is one of my favorite techniques because it allows sufficient amount of control and it creates so natural and glowing edges. If the paper is damp and the brush is damp, they both contain a relatively small amount of moisture. And when we take the paint and apply on the paper, it would not travel too far. And the edges which we accomplish in this way are very pleasing and very natural. And the last fifth painting technique is wet on damp. This painting technique, if used with understanding what it will do, is very much fun to engage with and play with and create quite um, unpredictable effects, especially backgrounds or landscape areas which you don't upfront plan where there will be a rock or tree or grass or something else and you just let the paint decide for you. Why I'm saying this is because wet on dump will create blooms in watercolor painting. What, mean, what I mean by this is that if the paper is damp, if we flood that paper, and especially if it, if it already crossed that wet stage, it's more towards dry stage than it is towards wet. If we dump more moisture, it would not have time to actually travel all around and mingle and create soft edges everywhere it will be blocked by already dry parts of the paper and around that will create very unpredictable hard edges. And if the water is, the amount of water in the brush is substantial, it could even create blooms with jagged edges and dark paint around those edges while in the middle there isn't much of that paint. It's all about what we want to accomplish. And using any of those five painting techniques is something we need to understand to our greatest advantage during watercolor paintings. If we know how to use them, we are in control. And we can, before we even put that brush on the paper, know what's going to happen if we do any of those five different scenarios. That's why during the painting, we first think what we would like to create. Is it soft? Is it hard edge? What color will that be? How that will behave on the paper? And only then we act. And knowing what's going to happen is very helpful because we can design our actions to follow the exact footprints of where we want to go and how we would like to develop our watercolor painting. All five painting techniques have been employed while painting those plums. In the plum, which is on the left side, we primarily engaged wet in wet painting technique and to some extent wet on damp, damp on damp, and also damp on wet which was primarily used to lift some of the areas where the color became too dark and we wanted to obtain slightly lighter values, especially in the areas towards the bottom of the plum where we have presence of reflected lights. In this case, our edges were still soft because the entire area 
was wet. In the middle plum, we primarily used wet on dry painting technique. In the case this technique is used, the edges become quite sharp and if it's engaged for the entire painting, then the painting could become quite um, hard with a lot of hard edges all over. However, this technique is extremely useful when we want to accomplish very fine details then we have high precision, we can exactly paint what we want, and we can later after soften the edges. In the third case, in the third demo, on the right side, our goal was to paint the entire painting in one layer. So we engaged primarily wet on wet, but in some instances a little bit of damp on wet and wet on damp just so we can make the most out of the shortest amount of time which we have. The colors were bold and eventually everything comes together as a nice soft mingling of the color from one into another. So those are five basic, essential, must-know painting techniques for every watercolor artist. I hope you enjoyed watching the video today, watching me painting this demonstration, and I really hope you learned something new today. Thank you for watching, and have a great day. See you in the next video.